what we have before you and I. We are going to review the association between five particular antioxidants in the reduction of the risk of oncogenic HPV infection in women. Now, they looked at 15 antioxidants overall, and the study that they looked at ran from 2003 to 2016. And they looked at women in the age group of 18 to 59, and they identified five antioxidants in particular which help reduce the risk of oncogenic uh, HPV infection. Now, keep in mind, this is geared towards association. So we're not going to be looking at dosaging per se, just that the level of these particular antioxidants when higher in women, in particular the top 25% quartile, had a significantly greater effect at lowering the risk, correlation-wise, as opposed to the women in the bottom 25% quartile. So without further ado, let's get right into the research as follows, and we shall begin. Study identifies specific antioxidants that may reduce oncogenic HPV infection in women. Researchers found that adequate levels of five antioxidants may reduce infection with the strains of human papillomavirus HPV associated with cervical cancer development. Although previous studies have suggested that the onset of HPV-related cancer development may be activated by oxidative stress, i.e., hence, antioxidant, the association has not been clearly understood. This study evaluated the associations between the 15 antioxidants and vaginal HPV infection status, no low risk and oncogenic high risk HPV, otherwise you'll see referred to as HR-HPV. In 11,000 women aged 18 to 59 who participated in the 2003 to 2016 National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. The findings. The study results showed that lower levels of serum albumin, people don't really think of serum albumin as an antioxidant, being a water-soluble protein. But however, though serum albumin does have antioxidant properties, therefore it's included in the five. But to proceed, in four dietary antioxidants, vitamin A, B2, which you may recognize as riboflavin or riboflavin, E, and folate were associated with a higher risk of HPV infection. Let me iterate through the sentence one more time so make, to make it clear. Lower levels of albumin, albumin, vitamin A, B2, E, and folate were associated with higher risk levels. But to proceed, albumin is the most Pound, if I could pronounce it right the first time, most bountiful circulating protein in plasma. And decreased serum albumin was found to be associated with increased systemic inflammation and impaired immune response. Based on the four dietary antioxidants, the researchers discovered a nutritional antioxidant score. Quoting, our results showed that the women with the lowest quartile, bottom 25%, of the nutritional antioxidant score had a higher chance of both high risk and low risk HPV infection compared with women with the highest quartile score, top 25%, after adjusting for other factors such as age, race, smoking, alcohol, and number of partners in the past 12 months. To conclude, currently, quoting, currently, there is no effective antiviral therapy to clear genital HPV infection. It is important to identify modifiable factors such as antioxidants, A, B2, vitamin E, and folate, along with, of course, the levels of serum albumin, associated with oncogenic HPV infection in order to prevent HPV carcinogenesis onset. So there you have a very, very simple laid out study. Again, it was basically gearing towards association, not towards the amount taken on a daily basis and so on and so forth. So a lot of dietary factors are involved as far as nutritional intake, whether it be supplementation or from food, uh, can play a role. But however, though, the association between the protective effect of those in the highest 25% of A, B2, E, and folate, as well as serum albumin, was significant enough 
to bring forward in the research and hold promise in basically help mitigating this particular negative effect of HPV itself. Again, beautiful study from the researchers. I regret I didn't have the opportunity to bring it up earlier, but however though, the DOI citation will be there so you can link to the study itself so you can review it on your own. It's only the abstract at this point in time. Hopefully they'll publish the full study later on, but still just the same. It is vital and it can help a lot, a lot of people. And that is the main purpose of doing the video. Again, gratitude, thank you, and gratitude to the researchers as well. As always, I look forward to seeing you once again next week. See you next time. Bye.